You made a mistake, and so did I. We underestimated the hero named Red Riot <laughs> and his chivalrous spirit. Yeah, I feel like he's not giving himself enough credit there. I mean, yeah, Kirishima helped out, but then also Fat Gum had this amazing hidden power that destroyed them in one the punch. Victory is ours. Meanwhile, Kirishima is just dead. Pretty awesome focus for both Kirishima and Batgum last episode. But there's just so many hanging threads as people get split up here. We've been with Sun Eater and Kirishima, but there's this lingering thing of what just happened in the hallway with Aizawa, right? And of course, there's, there's Mirio. There's a lot going on, and it feels like it's happening simultaneously, which is pretty damn awesome. As long as we have the finished product and the serum, I can bring us back from the brink of extinction. Yeah, it's a pretty, little pretty big card he has in his pocket. This story for potential investors. We've developed a drug that heroes are afraid of. Yeah, it's a dual thing. It's the drugs that heroes are terrified of that neutralizes them, and also the drug that does the opposite and enhances quirks. That's a game changer in anyone's hands. I mean, that's the kind of thing powerful enough to take down the Avatar. It's time to pull your weight, Temps. Okay. You can leave it to us, Overhaul. Exit, I think. <laughs> I don't know. I can't read Japanese. <laughs> One of these days I'll get subtitles for these things. Who are you? It's me, Fat Gum! <laughs> I had to shed a few pounds to end that fight, and but come on! My hood. Fat. He's just gum now. I'll stay strong. I promise. Whatever. It <laughs> he's, he's touched. <laughs> As he should be. Am I sensing big four? Is there gonna he be never a big does four? Well there because he ends up lost in his own head. Oh no, this makes me even more terrified for Mirio. This is just too, too much to be coincidental. Am I paranoid? I've been joking about it too. I've been joking about move over Mirio as the, you know, the true, the true man, the true one of honor, the true one. I, why can't I speak? The true person who deserves it, deserves the power. And they're called the big three. Fat gum, their mentor is noticing and fighting side by side Kirishima. Hmm. I'm all for Kirishima to grow and be amazing, but I really, really don't hope that happens at the expense of Mirio. Thanks, I did my internship with Fourth Kind, and he seemed to like my attitude too. He said Who doesn't like Kirishima's attitude? Were good for an agency's morale. You gotta be really useless to criticize Kirishima. Who would ever think to do such a thing? I mean, I feel like it would only be someone who was of no real purpose in battle, and wasn't very important, and no one ever could see Invisible Girl. I'm talking about Invisible Girl. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't know what she's missing. Kirishima, the man of our all of our dreams. But that's all I am. I'm so and much more than that inside. I want to be more than that. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I bugged Tamaki till he agreed to introduce me to you. He took the initiative on this. That's right. That's amazing. It's so cool. It's so great. Every step of the way, he just makes it happen for himself. It's not over. <gasps> this is a battle to the death. Oh my death, god. And I'm not dead yet. There's a back room where we can go and get ourselves patched up. Bring that kid. Bring that man with you. Hey. They're like equals now. Think about why they'd want you down here. A bloodthirsty beast who thrives on violence. You How have you a really job feel? <laughs> you don't even have enough strength left Speaking to put up a barrier. Yeah. What do you want from us, Rapa? I want us to bash our heads together to until we death. both die. Oh, I okay. come from the world of MMA. You must have heard of it, right? M M A. <laughs> Most of my opponents went down after a single punch and didn't get back up. How terrible. Tragic backstory. You know what that's like. Awful. Hoping for Awful. a challenge and God. always walking away unsatisfied. Alright, so take it down a notch. <laughs> there is no next time. You and your friend are done. It's over. Who cares? But I hear they have good fights in jail, so it's a win? It's crazy, but I think he really means it. I don't think yeah, <laughs> I don't think there's any hidden agenda here, hidden nuance. We both got banged up pretty good there, but we did it. And you've proven what you're capable of, not only to me, but more importantly, to yourself. To oh, what? No, that's, no, stop. <laughs> Who cares what the enemy thinks? I mean, I know that's Fat Gum's thing, right? It's all about being better, going beyond what the enemy can do, and that's how you win. But just speaking very generally, I think for a lot of these characters, really what the, the hurdle is, what the burden is for them, is not to prove themselves to the world, or to prove themselves to society, or to prove themselves to their mentors, but to prove themselves to themselves. I think that's sort of a more compelling journey. And I think that's sort of where it's at in life. You know, I think where we often have areas of our, our lives that are obstacles or 
things we want to improve. It's where we're not meeting our own expectations or our own desires for ourselves. There are things that I'm terrible at that I get no grief from just because I don't expect anything from myself in those areas. An example for me would be like, knitting. I don't know the first thing about knitting and that's all right. <laughs> but then there are also areas that haunt me where even though I'd say I'm maybe at a high level in some ways, I still haven't met what I want for myself. You know, examples of that would be like being a provider, like being a provider for not only myself, but like my entire family and people I care about. And I know from experience that letting yourself down in those areas or suddenly realizing you're not where you thought you were is one of the most excruciating feelings and living up to or surpassing your own expectations is one of the best feelings. And I think that's true even when no one knows it. You you know, like I've had moments of silent reflection where I take stock in something I've done, however temporary that feeling is, you know, even if no one else knows it or sees it, it's sort of a, a great feeling. You know, there's sort of few things that parallel that in terms of short term elation, I would say. And speaking, you know, as I have been doing a lot recently about this whole self-esteem thing, especially in Fruits Basket about like, how are you supposed to just believe in your greatness? You know, Kirishima just wrote a chapter of his life that's amazing. That is not just a random thought he he manufactured out of thin air to like himself. Like he set a goal and then he did that goal and he will forever have that as a thing he can reflect on. It's not much, but these bandages should stop the bleeding at least. I hate to delay, but I shouldn't move him just yet. So can I fight him now? He's still yeah, I like how they're just hanging out now in this room. Speaking of Full Metal Alchemist, this guy has potential to be like a... a What's his name? Barry the Chopper. He's a villain at the moment, but also in his way is sort of sideless. You know, he's just sort of like a dude who wants to fight and could be aligned in any number of ways and probably actually could grow. I mean, there's a lot of room for growth. <laughs> a lot of room, a lot of upward space for that. I went through a weird phase like that too, where I thought like, the coolest thing you could possibly do was to fight. You know, it's funny, like speaking of proving yourself, I feel like there was a time where I, I, I really wanted to do really, really risky things. Like I thought fighting was really cool and I had these little rickety fight club things with my friends where, you know, they were sort of these pointless exercises of getting together and punching each other in the face a bunch of times and then shaking hands and going home thinking we were, we were cool. <laughs> and just weird adrenaline seeking things in general. But looking back, I think a lot of that was me trying to find myself. You know, it was me trying to prove myself to myself. I remember there was this weird sort of logic that would play out. It would be something like, here's something I could do. That thing is scary. Oh, I'm, I'm scared. Because I'm scared, now I have to do it. Because if I don't do the thing I'm scared of, I'm weak. But the older I get and the more experiences I have under my belt, making choices that I think were good and doing the things I think were right, even when they were difficult or terrifying, the less that thought exists where I am worried if I don't do something, it means I'm not strong enough, you know, or I don't have the ability or I will always capitulate to fear. Now I look at a lot of those activities and I'm just like, what would be the point of that? <laughs> and it's not even that I know it's there. It's not even that I, I'm confident I'll always rise to the challenge and be able to handle any situation. I know that I can't, at least not all the time, you know, but I guess back to what I was saying about your own levels, right? Like I've met my own level of risk tolerance. I've met my own level of courage and bravery. And so I don't feel the need to perpetually be proving it to myself. I just trust that in the long term, I'll be able to do what I need to do. You know what I mean? And I know from experience, I can act despite intense fear, even if it's not every time perfectly. This might be a weird question for a hero to ask, but since we're getting to know each other or whatever... Do you want to be best friends? Want to tell me what you're doing running around with a small-time gang like this? Because of Overhaul, he's the only person I ever lost to. Oh. And then he scratched my... One second, oh I was Oh my dead. god. The next I was back to normal. So he didn't do that for Shigaraki's friend? That's just lazy and dirty. As fast and powerful as Rappa is, Shizuki yeah. can still take him? And he also was wrong. Overhaul was the only person he lost to. That is until he got absolutely wrecked by Kirishima and not so fat gum. Why not make a stand? Face us himself. His only other options are running or hiding. Take some sick pleasure out of disposing of people. They're looking to distribute something. Not sure what exactly. Drugs. Fat gum's most hated thing in the world. Lock, lock, do something! Stop giving orders! This is all your fault! Oh no, even in this moment, he's, he's gonna blame other people and criticize. Once I lock something down, it ain't going anywhere. That is an amazing quirk to have in this moment. However, enough force can overwhelm his power, and there's a limit to the surface area it can affect. Yeah, and, and building mover guy is on some serious drugs, so... One for all, full cowling! Shoot style! Deku hasn't really, like, been a part of these episodes. Shame we lost Fast Team. This would be a lot easier with them here, don't you think? Obviously. <laughs> that was great. This kid's persistent. You don't even know the half of it. There's a child in trouble. That's what's important here. 
They helped us get this far. No way I'm gonna let you stop us now! <laughs> That's awesome. Even if it is just him like kicking rocks and cement. You know what just occurred to me is that a lot of the mini character focused episodes we've had so far in this arc have been about them like rising to their own expectations, right? Deku and Mirio feel like the next step, right? Like they're sort of beyond that maybe where Deku doesn't really need to prove anything to himself at this point. That's not how it feels to me. His focus is really like purely doing his part and helping a person in need. And maybe there's something to that trajectory wise in terms of just humanity, where we spend so much time patching up the holes in our own existences, you know, and making ourselves more resilient and having our, our minds be our greatest enemies. But I guess you hope that eventually you get to a point where that's been settled, right? And then all your energy is focused on exactly what it is you want to do. And I feel like in those moments, there's a really, really good chance that those things are going to be service oriented, that they're going to be for the betterment of others, because you no longer need to pursue things that are like immediate emotional needs. And then what else do you put your focus in? You know what I mean? It opened up! What do you think they're planning this time? War is pushing. Well, it was a fun, fun show. And now we get to follow the adventures of Invis Invisible Girl. Locked down! <gasps> oh, it's a copy. Today I'm a trusted member oh of the old school. Oh my god. A nasty little gangster girl. If there's one thing I've learned from these shows recently, it's that. Oh my god. Hey, Wait, this what? imposter clone just appeared out of nowhere and attacked oh, me. Oh no. Don't fall for it, yeah, Aizawa. Aizawa, you know. And no. an imposter. We don't think the Hasaikai and the League of Villains would work together. <laughs> we were wrong. Right, they didn't know that. Way to sniff that out, though, at least. This is bad. But maybe we can stop her here. And that's why they split him up too. Eraser! No, get the hell out of here. Neutralizer. A coordinated and, attack. Yeah, they're the leading and Yakuza up. are working that's together. Very well done. That's why they separated us. Right, it was right. the League's turn to step in. Yep. With the assist of, of the wall barriers. And now she can be Aizawa. Wait, her body melted. You've it seen was it just like at the exam. This is insane. Yeah. The League of Villains. What are they up to? Yeah, I guess we don't fully know Shigaraki's game plan. I feel like it's it's one level beyond, or at least one level beyond, what he's telling Overhaul. I mean, he's he's prepared to use Overhaul. That seems pretty clear. I was going to say, but I got interrupted by stabbing. There's one thing I've learned from these two shows, is that do not underestimate the power of girl gangs in Japan. They will destroy you. Go! It's your move! Take it away. I don't even know the rules. Have an open mind. Is this a See metaphor? This is a learning experience. <laughs> It'll help you understand the bigger picture. But those three are cornerstones of my group. You can't have them all. How far we've come as people and as friends. But I feel like this is a mistake for Overhaul. Just because we know where their loyalties lie. You graze my body. <laughs> These high density personal seals are my support items. Interesting. You gotta wonder how he fights, right? No, no, I can't do this. <laughs> my head's splitting. Oh, yeah! <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I think that in his head twice is a little more fun. You feel the most responsibility for Big Sis Mag's death, and it's getting you down. But you've got to be a good bad guy and power through so we can do what we came here to do, okay? Wifey. What are they F? You want us to work with the Hasaikai? Here we go, a little, little explanation, a little backstory. Why are you letting this beat-faced loser it's give you moment. orders? He killed Big Sis Mag. I feel like he will and explain. he took Mr. Compress's arm. And we know Did it worked you just out. Forget? We know they agreed. I may be a villain, but I'm human too. We all are, man. Shigaraki knows that better than anyone. This, I feel like, is a huge moment for Shigaraki and for all the people in this room. And we know how it turns out, right? Like, he convinced them. And I think that the path there is probably a bonding experience where Shigaraki acknowledges all of their fears and is on the same page with them and wants the same things that they do and also is really, really upset about Magnus' death and ultimately connecting it to a bigger plan that they all agree with. Perhaps including them in affairs in a way that makes them feel like they're equals or at least that they're valued. This is for all of us. Right. I want you to infiltrate them. It's a lot of trust Fine. too, which is great. Never forget they're beneath us. Twice. Common you identity. They have to pay for what they did. Common vision. I believe in you guys. A little love. <laughs> I'll act as I please. Stab anyone. 
Oh, I have what is this dance sequence? I want. Yakuza vibes. Speaking of Yakuza. I can't imagine anyone more worthless than that! He literally just snapped. We'll make you play nice with us. Crush and kill them all! All right, <laughs> and letters <laughs> that I cannot read. This is interesting because this makes it feel like the League of Villains, as unfortunate as their name is, is like a tertiary force. You know, it's not just this side against this side. They have their own agenda, which given the trajectory of the last couple episodes, makes things look pretty bad for Overhaul, except for the fact that he's incredibly powerful and they keep reminding us of that. They keep making that really clear that he can literally destroy you and I guess also recreate you at will with like the touch of a fingernail and that he has these bullets that neutralize their quirks and make them about as useful as <clears throat> invisible girl on her best day you know with the villains it's kind of neat how you can blur the lines like that right because in this moment even though shigaraki and the other people in his group are not great people let's say and are villains in this one area actually they are paralleling the heroes i would argue in the sense that they have a vision and they are able to exhibit positive qualities in the name of that vision, such as faith in each other, rising to challenges, being measured and cautious and planning rather than giving into their hatred and being impulsive. And so weirdly in that sense, especially when like compared to overhaul, they're not that hard to get behind, at least in this one moment. I mean, we'll get a reminder, pretty sure, of just how awful they are. I mean, Toga did just stab a character, but he complained a lot, so it was sort of easy to... But yeah, categories aside, you know, villains, heroes aside, no one has a monopoly on good traits. You know, nobody has a monopoly on things that are powerful. And of course, there's a range there too, right? Like, I'd say on the, on the maybe extreme end towards villainy, you have Toga, who is a part of this whole thing and is a comrade and is able to believe in others but also is just unstable. But then you also have Twice, who doesn't seem awful as much as he seems misled and like unhealthy, you know? So it's interesting to have all three sides contrasted in this way. And it's almost like a dual challenge for heroes and villains alike with this new third enemy, this third entity, which is Overhaul, who arguably has the least amount of positive traits. You know, I think the most obvious difference is as the show is covered in great length, that he sees everyone as expendable. So another really fun, really great episode in this overhaul Home Alone arc. I'll see you guys next time when Deku kicks something and then it's gone for the rest of the episode.